As I mentioned before, sometimes we actually end up with a domain restriction, a zero in the denominator, and it is not actually a vertical asymptote. So let's see where that would happen. Well, in this function, I'm gonna go ahead and factor the top and bottom. And what we end up seeing is that we can actually simplify this out. Now, the thing we want to keep in mind is this is our function. So if we simplify out this x minus two on the top and bottom, we can't just ignore the fact that x equals two gives us a zero in the denominator, okay? So it is a domain restriction. However, it is not a vertical asymptote. And the reason for that ends up actually being that it not only gives us a zero in the denominator, it also gives us a zero in the numerator. So we end up with zero over zero, which for all intensive purposes, doesn't end up kind of having that infinite limit. It is truly just undefined. So this is where we're going to get a hole. Now, if you notice in this particular equation, okay, and that was a three, not a two there, we end up with x plus two over x plus three well, that means that we also have a domain restriction that x plus three cannot equal zero, or x cannot equal negative three. Well, this is much more similar to what we saw in our previous examples when we talked about vertical asymptote. So now we know that we're going to have a vertical asymptote at um, x equals negative three. So this is an illustration of two domain restrictions and kind of how we know that a vertical asymptote is more of a limit. It's going to approach plus or minus infinity, go up or down um, really, really fast um, as we approach, in this case, x equals negative three. However, a whole is kind of more of a final um, domain restriction in that it will give us an undefined amount and it will actually create a hole at that point. So to find that hole, we now have the x coordinate. We know that x equals two will give it that, but we also need, it's a point, so we need a y coordinate. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that simplified function and just plug in our x value because we know that the whole happens when x equals two, so let's figure out what our y value would end up being if x equals two. So now we know that we have a whole at two, four fifths. The last thing I wanna mention is, if you notice, I used the simplified function here. Well, that clearly makes sense because if I plugged it into my original function, I would get that zero over zero relationship, which is of course what I was trying to avoid in the first place.